I'm no contact with both my parents. So what that basically means is for one of them, there's no communication between the two of us at all. And then for the second one, if I see them again, we're just gonna have to throw hands. <laughs> Couldn't be me. I mean, how insane does that even sound? It's a lot more common than you think though. We really need to dive into why so many young adults are choosing to go no contact with their parents. It's actually kind of triggering for me personally, as well as mind blowing at the same time. The truth will shock you and honestly, it might make you see why some people just shouldn't have children. Whew. That might trigger some of you on the other side of this camera. I leave my house, I'm triggered. I sit in my room all day, I'm triggered. I just can't get away from it. Listen, it's finna get spicy. So if that sounds like something that you are interested in, definitely make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I make videos to say the quiet part out loud. So don't forget to turn on that notification bell so that you can be notified of my future videos. Now my name is Tandy. Let's get into it. You like my hair? I know y'all ain't watching this video for my hair, but for my returning subscribers, y'all know what's up. Um, what y'all think about this hair? Because I low-key want to lock my hair, but at the same time, I don't know if I could commit. So this is like me kind of testing the waters a little bit, you feel me? Anyway, back to the subject at hand. I was scrolling down TikTok as one does, and there was a woman by the name of Natalie Cannoli, I believe was her name, and she recently went viral on TikTok for doing the most. Let's check it out. Anytime I meet someone new, I'm like, hey, can you look at my sister on Instagram? And they're like, why? And I'm like, just do it. Um, because long story short, my, sis my oldest sister went no contact with our family like five or six years ago. And like, apparently it's not just a bit. Like she's like in it for the lifetime, like for the long haul. Um, and she has this blocked on everything, but like obviously she's not gonna have a st random stranger block that I just met. So I'll like go on their phone and I'll look up her Instagram and I'll find it and then I'll do. S I'm like her creepy ex boyfriend. Like I can't even help it. Like, <laughs> I'm like, hello, it's me. Period. Dot dot. Love and miss you. Hope we can talk. Um, always wishing you the best. Okay, I need to pause it right there because that is unhinged. Say what you will. I feel like that is unhinged behavior. I mean, if somebody is setting a clear boundary, why are you disrespecting it? The audacity of her to disrespect her sister's boundaries like that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You know, Merry Christmas. Happy birthday. Whatever it is, you know? And then immediately, like, she'll read it and, like, she'll just, like, block the account. And then, like, like the, the stranger's like, what the fuck is that about? And I'm like, eh, it's a sister thing. You wouldn't understand. Like, Do you have a sister? Yeah, you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't understand how these relationships are. <laughs> Or like someone from our hometown will like post a picture and like tag my sister and I'll comment on it and I'm like, hi sister. And then they'll and then the person who posted it will just like unfollow me or like delete my comment and I'm like, if you don't have a sister, you just don't get it. I do not think that that is a sister thing. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? I have three sisters, okay? So I definitely get like wanting to be a little aggy to your sister. Like for example, um, my sisters never answer the phone, okay? I don't know what it is, but they never answer the phone. Doesn't matter who it is, they don't answer the phone for their husbands, okay? They don't answer the phone for their children, like they just don't answer the phone. It's okay. It's not okay though, it's not. And a lot of times, like my sisters will have, uh, what is it called? Um, silence notifications, you know, you get the little purple message at the bottom of your iMessage, and I'm like, First of all, I've never used D&D &D a day in my life because if I don't want to answer the phone, I'm just not going to answer the phone, period. But that's their thing. Okay, me, I'm the type of person where I'm going to push notify anyway. Like, no, I want you to see this, okay? Because why are you ignoring me? So I get that, but I don't know. In this case, I feel like after a while, this is... It's not the flex that you think it is, for lack of better words. After a while, she's shown you that there is a clear boundary that she does not want to communicate with you and you continue to antagonize her 
by using other people's profiles, first of all, seek help, okay? You need therapy, Miss Natalie Cannoli, because why even go through the motions of that? Like, I don't know. I've never been that pressed to speak to anybody, uh, family included. If you don't want to talk to me, I'm not going to force you to talk to me. If you already know the outcome of how this is going to go, why even go through that? Like, you look desperate, you look crazy, unhinged, all of the things. I don't know, just my opinion. How do y'all feel? Comment down below. This sister is, is just out of pocket to me. Like, girl, have a seat, relax, calmate, you know what I mean? Even in the video, she is mocking a clear boundary that is being set by her sister. So she definitely gets an L in my book for that. But let's talk about the subject at hand though. Can we, can we talk, okay? Because why is it that this sister of yours has set such a clear boundary of not wanting to communicate with not only her parents, it seems, but also the entire family? Like, why would an adult, a whole adult, decide that they want to be no contact with their parents? I mean, I surely would think that that wasn't an easy decision to come to, or was it? I've seen so many videos recently of, of parents saying that their adult children have decided to go no contact to cut them off estrangement. And I wanted to share my view on this topic. I've been a clinical psychologist for over a decade now, and I have not met one adult child that has made this decision and it not be the absolute hardest thing that they've ever done. You see, as humans, we are wired to connect with our parents. We are wired to want to have a relationship with our parents. And what tends to happen is that when they come into adulthood and start unpacking some of their childhood and some of their experiences and now revisit that relationship with their parents, there are things that they want to discuss, things that need reprocessing. And what they find is lack of respect from the parent, lack of acknowledgement of their reality, lack of accountability, and pretty much a refusal to see their point. This elicits some parental shame from the parent and they tend to double down, get defensive, and just discredit the adult child's experience. This I want to pause it right there because, wow, I can only imagine, I mean, if you're new to this channel, I do not have children, um, some of y'all already know that, but I can only imagine, just as an adult myself, how hard it must be to raise an actual child. I mean, there's no manual out there, right? So it's not like there's a set in stone, like, you do things this way and your child's going to come out perfect or whatever, right? We're all human, we're gonna make mistakes, but I think that it definitely takes a lot of strength and maturity to be able to just hold a conversation with your adult child and be able to process some of the things that they are telling you. I mean, I, th I think we have to think about it like this. At this point, like nobody knows you like you know yourself. And that goes for both parties, right? That goes for the parent and that also goes for the child. So in our adult stages, if we can't communicate exactly, you know, hey, this may have been what was okay for you because you were leading this relationship as I was a child. And we'll unpack that logic later in this video. But, uh, oh gosh, I don't even know how to articulate this well. But like, I, I think as a parent, if you been able to raise a fully functional adult in society who's able to communicate their feelings and have and, and willing to actually just have an open conversation about something that you're doing that just does not serve them anymore because again they are now an adult not a child you're no longer leading the relationship I think you should be willing to hear them out you know and be able to come to an agreement as to you know how can we move forward so that way I don't make you feel some type of way or you know make you feel less than you know I, I want you to thrive I want the best for you I want to create continue to create a fulfilling environment for you again I think that comes with a lot of maturity but I think if you are a responsible and caring adult I think you'll want to make those moves towards having a healthy relationship and communicate and see the errors in your own ways. It's not to say that, you know, you're necessarily a bad person, but I think it shows that you care enough about that child to want to continue to help them succeed because at the end of the day, all of this comes down to 
trauma and nobody wants to intentionally inflict trauma on people. I think that parents should be a little bit more open-minded. Um, I'm not saying that all parents aren't, but a lot of parents are not. So let's finish what she has to say. It's extremely painful for the adult child and despite what often is many, many, many attempts to repair this relationship, the adult child makes the difficult choice of estrangement. And this choice even years later, continues to bring them pain, but they find it to be the healthiest in this situation. So this idea that this is the easy route is just not something that I find to be the case. And so if you are the parent of an adult child that has chosen to go no contact with you, I invite you to explore. I invite you to lean in with curiosity and ask yourself, if I do want to have a relationship with my adult child, what is it that I can do? What can I learn? How can I best listen? Blaming your adult child for the ruptures in a relationship that's usually goes both ways and where the parent holds more weight because at the end of the day, they are still the parent is what's probably getting in the way of you having the relationship that you desire. And by the way, just because you took certain behavior from your parents and you allowed it and you made allowances for them does not necessarily mean that your adult child needs to do the same. And no, I don't think it's a generational thing. I will say, though, that a lot of millennials and um, individuals in Gen Z are in therapy. They're much more conscious, much more aware of what um, healthy relationships look like. And they're going to want that in their lives. Jesus, there is a fly in here and it is bothering me so bad. Okay, I cannot stand flies. Anyway, we are living in unprecedented times where, you know, this is the information age. We have literally computers in our purses and our back pockets. We are able to now fully communicate exactly how we feel and, and we have the terminology and, you know, the verbiage to express those feelings and keep it a stack, okay? Older generations did not have what we have right now. So I think with that knowledge comes responsibility. And not just a responsibility, meaning like for others, like, no, it's a responsibility on yourself to make sure that you are protecting your peace, protecting, you know, your mental health. We are literally bombarded with information and content, for lack of better words, every day, all day. That takes a toll on our mental health. So when we are around our loved ones, we definitely don't want to uh, agitate our spirits any more than need be. I think we've all come to the idea that, okay, when I'm around my loved ones, the people who are, you know, in my home, I don't want to feel attacked any more than I already am. I want to feel at peace at home. And if your family is not providing you that peace, that safe space to authentically be you, nobody wants to deal with that. You know, we have the verbiage and the terminology to articulate our thoughts and feelings and they should be respected. And if they're not going to be respected, why would somebody want to continue to be around that? Write that down, write that down. I want to keep it fair because this goes both ways, okay? Just because you have a boundary, a firm boundary, does not mean that that is going to coincide with the lifestyle or the beliefs of another person. But I think that if this is your family, you know, we should all be able to agree to disagree and still coexist. Like, we've got to be able to communicate well enough so that we can understand how to coexist with one another. But if it's not one thing that I cannot Dan, when you tell somebody that you don't rock with one of your family members, a parent in particular, and it's always, oh, that's your mom or that's your dad, blase, blase, you should, you, you should speak to them. You need to reach out to them. You know, you just shrug it off or whatever. And next time you see them, it's the same repetitive question. Like, oh, have you spoke to this person? You know the answer. Why are you asking me this? Newsflash, okay? Children did not ask to be here. The onus of repairing the relationship should be on the parent. Keep that energy towards the parent, not the child, okay? I don't care how old they are. Has anyone else noticed that when an adult child chooses to not have a relationship with a parent, it's always, but she's your mom, but he's your dad. You only have one dad, you only have one mom. And it's never, wow, what? 
could a parent do to cause their child to make this decision? Or it's never, but they're your children. How could you treat your children that way? Why is it that the responsibility of the relationship is placed on the child? Hello, that's what I'm saying. Like, make it make sense, okay? The math is not mathing. I'm so glad that this professional made this point. I know y'all like my unpopular opinion videos, so let me give you another one, okay? Because I just thought of this on the dome, okay? Parenting is a thankless job. If you are looking to be a parent based off of um, being praised for doing the bare minimum or doing, you know, or going even above and beyond for said child, you should probably not have children. Because the idea of bringing a child into this world, okay, a whole human life into this world, without being asked to, by the way, by said child anyway, right? Why are you expecting anything in return? The only thing that that child knows is what you teach it. Even if you are praised for the environment that you set forth for developing this child, okay, now what? You got a thank you card, like, okay, now what? you still have to be a parent. All I'm trying to say is that I just feel like you should not have a child if you are seeking to be praised for having that child. You don't get a, a medal for having a child. All you get is a birth certificate and a social security card and they send you on your way. That's it. You don't win a trophy for having a child. People have babies every day, B. Do your job and just pour into your child the way that they are communicating to you that they would like you to pour into them. But yeah, there are so many creatives on TikTok who are just coming out and making videos about why they went no contact with their parents, what they've learned after being no contact with their parents. And let me tell you, some of these people are going no contact for years and years at a time. Is it concerning? I think it depends on how you look at it, you know, concerning for who, you know, where there's influencers expressing why and how they've went no contact with their parents. There's also parents on TikTok just the same discussing what it's like being on the opposite end. And some parents care, some parents don't. Is anyone else just a little concerned for the adults going no contact with their parents and then the parents just really don't seem to be unbothered? Like Gen X, boomers are not really as phased by their adult children going no contact as I thought. And it's almost like they didn't want us in the first place. Too loud? The embarrassment of parental estrangement. How do I tell people I don't know where my child is? How do I tell people that my adult child hates me, is not taking my phone calls, doesn't tell me where they live? I have a grandchild I've never met. I have grandchildren I've never met. This is an actual story of many moms. It's why I built this community. It was my story, and it was not a story I was proud of. I wanna take a look at this article from The Hill. It says, one quarter of adult children are estranged from a parent. The article goes on to say, more than one quarter of young adults are estranged from one or both parents or have been, a finding that suggests a societal shift away from the traditional bonds of a family. Several recent studies, articles, and hot-selling books have hinted that young America is rejecting the biblical adage, honor thy father and mother, along with the attendant concept of compulsory kinship. Instead, young adults are picking who will populate their families. And I'm not against that at all. What, how does the saying go? You know, just because someone's blood doesn't make them family. Younger generations are definitely adhering to that philosophy. The article goes on to read, One recent study drawing on thousands of interviews with adult children found that 26% reported estrangement from fathers. A much smaller share at 6% had cut ties with their mothers. The findings appeared in the April issue of the Journal of Marriage and Family. I mean, I'm not surprised about there being a higher percentage of people not speaking to their fathers than their mothers. I mean, because we've talked about on this channel, um, I'll try to leave a link up here of baby daddy culture and how it's pushed down society's throats. Like everybody wants to be the next baby mama. Nobody wants to have, you know, a family unit. And now while I don't necessarily meet think that that means you have to uh, be married, I think it definitely helps to have some stability in your children's lives while raising them. There's a lot more men that are abandoning their the families that they create versus women. Um, I think there's also a saying that goes, mama's baby, daddy's maybe, I think is how it goes. What do you mean by that? 
and it's because you know the woman is actually carrying and you know pushing out the life you know you as, as a woman typically it's harder to uh, release that responsibility once you've already went through the motions of uh, conceiving carrying and you know pushing the little baby out you know it's it's kind of hard to detach for a lot of women I will say not all women so I'm not surprised that the statistics are the way that they are but call a spade a spade there are still quite a few people who are going no contact with their mothers too so it goes to show that just because a woman is a mom does not necessarily mean that she is maternal going back to what i said earlier in this video just because you can have children does not mean you should not everybody deserves to have children so i just learned that according to an ohio state university survey of a thousand estranged mothers 80 percent of them blamed the estrangements on a third party that's why you're estranged i'm just saying so honestly I'm not mad at that. I am not mad at that study at all. To me, I've never liked the idea that you can't choose your family because who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who gonna check me? So many times do we see our parents and family members leave relationships that have cheating, disrespect, lies, you know, you name it. People have walked away from other people as adults. So you're telling me that because you're my family, I'm not given that same grace? I think a lot of the younger generation are feeling like, no, this is my life and I get to curate it however the hell I want to. It can be frustrating when other people cannot take responsibility for their actions. I mean, think about being in a relationship with a lover. Like if your partner is not listening to you and not taking what you're saying as important or making your feelings feel dismissed of any kind, that does not feel good. So imagine how an adult child feels when they're coming to you, their parent saying that they don't like something that you're doing and you just become dismissive. That does not feel well. Now, I don't want this video to be a complete bashuation. <laughs> I just made up that word, but I don't want it to be completely bashful of parents and make it seem like you know parents don't know how to accept responsibility the older generation are out of touch i don't want this video to come across like that at all because there are parents who can take accountability and i definitely want to make sure that in this video we shine light on the parents who are actually out here putting in the work and listening to what their children have to say let's check out this next video because Gotta give my girl some snaps, okay? She's a parent who gets it. Good morning, Linda. Thanks for the comment. Let's break it down. I hope you stay for the whole the whole video because I think you might find it enlightening. So here's your comment. Why are you promoting this? If you ever have a no contact child, you'll know how painful this is. No contact with your parents is a fad, a bad one. Let's break this down. I'm gonna try to make it short, but this might be a long answer, but let's try, okay? So first things first, why are you promoting this? I'm not promoting anything. The only thing I promote on my page is good mental health, healing your trauma, healing yourself and having good mental health for yourself, okay? And the reason I started this was because a year and a half ago, my son came to me and said, mom, I'm gonna have to go no contact with you unless you heal your trauma because some of your behaviors are toxic and they're hurting me and they're hurting, gonna hurt my family and I'm gonna protect my family at all costs. So heal your shit or you're not gonna be a part of my life. Whoa, Linda, that was hard. That was really hard to hear, like super hard to hear. I was crushed and I was terrified because I thought, what am I gonna do if my kids cut me out of their life? But instead of blaming my kid for going no contact with me, I decided to take responsibility myself and I went to trauma therapy. I went to treatment, I dug deep and I'm still digging deep. I'm trying to heal this trauma. And while I was healing that trauma, guess what I discovered? Every time I was around my mother, I would start to heal a wound and then my mother would, you know, poke the wound, not intentionally because she has her own trauma, but she would be poking at me. I'd be like, mom, stop it. That hurts. S stop behaving that way. That's painful. Mom, stop that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I want to stop it right there because, oh my gosh, how relatable. It just, 
it's so triggering to hear this because I've been through it. Like, you want to, you know, keep that relationship going. You want to, you know, have that person in your life so much, but you are also evolving and growing, especially as a young adult. Like, you are growing and you're trying to unpack the trauma and, and work through it, but while you're around this person, they just keep picking at that that wound, you know, that trauma. It just keeps coming back to you. So it's almost like I'm trying to do the work, but I keep getting like pulled back down. It's like quicksand, you know? So ah, that was triggering for me personally. Um, let's finish listening to what she has to say. And I recognized that I was never gonna heal as long as I had contact with my mom. I had to go no contact with my mom so I could take the space to heal. So I did that. I went no contact with my mom and I explained to her that I needed space to heal. And she said, take all the space you want, which made it much easier for me. And then I went into therapy and treatment. And I, I, you know, I just did all the things. I did all the things and started healing myself. And now I'm low contact with my mom. But something amazing happened with my relationship with my children. As Soon as I started healing my trauma, my relationship with my children is improving and they want me around now because I'm not toxic. It's not a fad though. And I'll explain to you why. When we were younger, we were taught respect your elders no matter what, no matter what, they're your mom and dad and you must have them in your life and care for them until their dying days. Got it? And that was a responsibility that was put on us children regardless of how our parents parented us or how toxic our parents are in the present moment. So it gives parents permission to do and act any way they want and adult children are just supposed to take it. So I asked my mom one day, I said, mom, why do we respect our elders? And she said, because you're supposed to. Okay, but why? Because that's the way the rule is. Okay, but why? She couldn't answer me. So my question to you, Linda, is this. If I have someone in my life that has treated me badly most of my life, if I have somebody in my life that is toxic and harmful to my mental health and my mental well-being, do I not have the right to get them out of my life so I can actually live a happy life? How many years do I have to give to my mother in caring for her emotional well-being? What about mine? And as soon as I recognized that, I went, I don't ever, ever want my children to be responsible for my emotional well-being. I don't want my children to ever have to carry the burden of my trauma. So it's not a fad, it's here to stay. Because people have now realized that we don't, you don't get to have a free pass. You can't have a free pass to just say, well, listen, I birthed you, so therefore, I don't care how miserable I make your life, you gotta have me in your life, okay? Okay. Listen, Linda, okay? She ate with this video. I mean, I just love the self-awareness. I mean, especially as a, a, from the older generation, you know? It just shows that the work can be done, you know? As long as you're willing to listen, okay? As long as you are willing to put forth the effort and actually show up for your children, even when they're adults. And it's hard. It is not easy at all. But it's something that we have to do. Um, especially, again, if you are a parent, like, it's a thankless job. You are not gonna get a reward for being a parent. There's gonna be times where you probably don't even like your child, but you still gotta do the work. It's never done. It's never done. So I am just, uh my heart, because just hearing this woman speak about just, you can just see it in the words that she speaks, you know, just, her actions, she loves her children. And I think at the end of the day, that is all children want, even adult children. We just want to be loved. The journey of life is so intriguing in that you should not want to be the same as you were the day before. So not only is your child growing and you know maturing, but you should be too. You should never be at the point where you just want to stop learning and being better. Don't be complacent. I think that's what we can take away from this video is just not being complacent with how things are. Break the cycle. Stop the trauma. It's not that hard. This woman right here just showed us, like, it's not that hard. You just gotta be willing to do the work. And I'm not even gonna talk anymore. I'm just gonna let her finish. 
Like this whole video needs to be played, honestly. That's not how it works. People have a choice. People have a choice. And my children have a choice as to whether or not they want me to be a part of their life. Just like I have a choice as to whether or not I want my mom to be a part of my life. Because when I have healthy, happy, healed individuals surrounding me, guess what happens, Linda? My mental health gets better. I can heal better. So if your kids have gone no contact with you, it's because they want to save their mental health. They can't take it anymore and they want to heal themselves. So adult children will go no contact with their parents after much struggle. I mean, this takes years of kids going, mom, please get some help. Mom, please stop doing that. Mom, oh, can you please just stop, stop, stop. They do it for years before they go no contact. I'm very proud of my son because he only had to tell me a couple of times and then he came out with no contact right away when he recognized mom's not getting better on her own. She needs help. So it's not a fad. It's going to be here to stay. And if you are a parent of adult children, heal your shit or your kids aren't going to be a part of your life. Plain and simple. It's really not that difficult to understand. It's difficult to do, but it's not difficult to understand. I hope that helps you to understand my journey. And Linda, please feel free to go back and look at some of my videos because yeah, I know the pain of a child saying they're going to go no contact. That's what led me to my healing journey. Shout out to that lady, okay? And shout out to her son for inspiring her to want to do better. I love that for them both, honestly. If you're choosing to go no contact with your parent, you have to be doing it for the right reasons. And I'm not saying like for your mental health or anything like that. No, I, I get that. But you have to be doing it for the right reasons because sometimes it can be, it can come across as manipulative. I think the previous example in the last video we watched was great at showing us the healthy way to do things but I think again we also have to show the dark side of this because you know two truths can exist at the same time and I don't know if I am articulating this in the best way possible so I'm gonna let the doctor in this next video clip cook so let's watch this. Adults going no contact with their parents and then the parents she asked if anyone is concerned about the adult children who go no contact with their parents and the parents seem to be unbothered by this now I want to start off by saying that there are reasons for people to go no contact so if you have that legitimate reason then this maybe isn't for you however if you go no contact in hopes that your parent will fight through the no contact to prove love or for you to prove your worth through then, then we have an issue. If you're worried that the other person seems unbothered because they're following your boundaries and you haven't heard from them and they're not trying in your mind, then maybe no contact wasn't the solution for you. I don't know. Because you should be thankful that someone is actually following your boundaries and how would you know if they're unbothered if they're actually following your boundaries so i have a lot of questions about this because sometimes it seems a little manipulative right to be like you have to follow my rules and when you do now you're unbothered by it that feels like you're trying to prove worth in there somewhere and that's not where your worth comes from now, alternatively, if you set a boundary and the person pushes the boundary, then we talk about that person as if they're a narcissistic parent because they've made it all about themselves. So sometimes there's this caught in the middle situation here. We're all human and we don't know what to do with it. But if your intent for going contactless with your parents was for them to fight through and they're not then I think you need to re-examine why you did it. Because I think also going no contact gives you the time to work on your own healing without really worrying about somebody else. So yeah, don't be worried about the other parent being unbothered. Maybe that parent is just following the rules for you. I don't know. Every situation is different. We don't know, but I would love to know your thoughts. Estrangement is emotional abuse in the same way that separation or divorce is emotional abuse. It's not. It is a person saying, I can't be in this relationship anymore. This relationship is hurting me. 
and I cannot remain in this place. For some people, it's a separation. It's saying, I need space away from you right now to sort out my thoughts. I need distance between us. And sometimes that distance and separation involves healing and change, and both parties can come back together. But sometimes that separation leads to a divorce, a full end. And that might be because there was no change during the separation. Or it might be that the change that did happen just wasn't enough to revive the relationship. And just like divorce or separation, estrangement can cause immense amounts of pain. And for the person who is not the one orchestrating it, it can make you feel powerless. Like something is being done to you that you have no control over. And you might be tempted to interpret that feeling, that pain as emotional abuse, but that doesn't make it abuse. The pain that you feel over a broken relationship can be absolutely valid, but it doesn't mean the person is abusing you. They don't owe you a relationship. They didn't choose you as a parent. You chose them. They owe you exactly what they owe every other human on the planet. Respect as another human being who walks the same planet as they do. But not a relationship, not intimate connection with their life. Estrangement is like a separation or a divorce. The purpose is to end something that's not working. And yeah, it is about power but not power wielded against another person, but power over our own selves, over our own lives, and over our own healing. And that is love. Okay, so how are we feeling about this topic? I mean, it was a lot to unpack. Let me know in a comment below if you are no contact with your parent. I'd love to know if you feel like going no contact has helped you or limiting the contact if that has helped you just the same. And if it has helped you, explain how. I'm curious to know, you know, what boundaries did you set place and how did that help you in your relationship with your parent? Y'all know I love the discourse, okay? I always try to comment back to anybody who comments under my videos, but if you made it all the way to the end of this video, baby, you a real one. Hey, friends. At this point, we pretty much go together. So if you made it this far and you ain't subscribed, girl, what you doing? Tap that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell as well so that you can be notified of my future videos. I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!